the goal of the open house is to not sell, not to sell that house. That's not the goal. If that happens, great. But the goal is to get face to face, build relationships with people, whether that be a neighbor, a buyer, a seller, etc. Welcome back to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I'm your host, Matt Smith here. I've got a special guest with me today, Kristen Reagan. Kristen is one of our buyer specialists on the team, and she's going to talk to us about a lot of things that you can apply as an agent in the business that she's doing every single day to help her grow her business during these challenging times. Kristen, say hi to the people. Hello. How's it going? I'm excited for you to be here. I know you were nervous, but I'm excited that you're here. You've got some great content. That you're gonna um, you're gonna share some value with the people today. And as always, he wanted to make sure I mentioned him because he's not on camera today. And I think last time he said sorry, ladies, you don't get to see his face today. But he's in the background talking. As always, we have Colin. Colin, say hi. What's up, guys? I'm excited about this content today, and I'll keep us on track. Awesome. <laughs> Somebody needs to. So. Um, so today we're going to break down open house mastery, how to master your open houses. A lot of real estate agents hear the word open house and they think, oh, we just got to do another open house or I tried it one time and it didn't work. And most of the, the communication that I hear about round open houses from the agent perspective is negative. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to break down how we use it in our business, how Kristen has used it and how we can make it actually a positive in your business and help you create momentum, especially in challenging times that we're seeing right now in this market. I mean, there's some markets that leads are down 50 percent. Open mm -hmm. houses is a great way for you to create new leads. Right. Definitely. So, um, Kristen, why don't we why don't we just start with. What is your perspective on why people should do open houses? Like what's some value you can get from an open house? Mostly getting in front of people. You want to get in front of buyers and sellers. Um, so obviously you have a lot of buyers that come through the open house, but also see it on social media too. Um, so you'll get in front of people that way. And then also um, getting in front of neighbors. Um, we yeah. do a lot of that too. So yeah, a lot of people, um, I, I say this all the time when we're talking about open houses is that nosy neighbors are a great thing. Yeah. Right. Because guess what they have, they have a home that, that they own. Eventually they may want to sell it. Right? right. And so I want to, I want to be the resource for them as well. Um, also just a, a, a quick note, Kristen brought it up before the show is we, we did something interesting that was a kind of a twist on open houses back when COVID was, was really a, a new thing. Yeah. And we did uh, some virtual open houses and we actually did five of them in I think a span of five days and all five of those houses sold that next day from the virtual open house. So we'll break that down towards the end of the episode to, to tell you guys that we ways that you can use new technology in today's changing and challenging world to still do a version of open house and get face to face and in front of people. So um, the goal of the open house isn't necessarily to sell the house, right? So setting expectations when, like I said, there's a negative connotation with open houses. It's because agents have false expectation. They think I'm doing the open house. All I have to do is put one sign in the yard. I show up, I bring a box of cookies and somebody's going to walk in and buy the house. Will that happen? Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll right. see a unicorn one day too, right? <laughs> but in the reality is there's a process that you can follow to master that. And I want you to realize, let's set the proper expectations. The goal of an open house isn't to sell that house. Right. That is not the goal of an open house. If that happens, that's fantastic. But the chances of that happening is, is about 3%. Only 3% of people buy the first house that they inquire on, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. so you have a 97% chance of failure if that's your expectation of selling this house. Yeah. Instant gratification too. That's right. Instead of long term. So. so the value is that you get some marketing out. Kristen hit on that. You get marketing out to get your brand out, to let people know. But also it gets you face to face with buyers, sellers, and neighbors. And so as an example, the value of getting face to face, there's a stat out there that it's around 80% of clients work with the first real estate agent they meet in person. So you have an 80% chance, if you have zero value to give, you have an 80% chance of working with that person if they buy or sell if you meet with them face to face. Mm -hmm. An open house is a great opportunity to do that. So we're gonna break down how we can get more people into your open house. Um, but let's dive a little deeper on the why, um, on the why open houses are important. Kristen, do you have any any feedback or advice on things that maybe some mindset shifts that have really helped you or helped the team? Yeah, I think that, you know, people, um, I've had agents come up, behind, I, I, I've after an open house, I've asked, you know, how'd it go? And they would say, you know, um, only one person came through, for example, and they were very disappointed and felt like it was a failure, but that's not always the case because 
you got in front of other pe- you got in front of that person and then also um like i said you get to meet neighbors you get to um you know get that marketing on um social media and everything and so you know, you don't know what other agents on your team got leads from that on social media. 100%. You know what I mean? So it's the domino effect, not just that one day of activity. Well, you hit on even it. the people driving by and seeing the sign. I know mm-hmm. that I've dri- driven by many open houses signs and I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't know that house was for sale. And that's one more piece that you might get a lead from that you're not aware of. Yeah. A thousand percent. And again, we're going to talk about maximizing the open house. So again, what it does is it gives you another marketing opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. And and so we're saying this from an agent perspective, like it sounds a little selfish, but that's kind of who our audience here in this platform, but also to the client. Think about the more exposure you get them, the more eyeballs you get on their property, the better it is for them as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. And so it's a win win situation. So just let's pretend nobody comes to your open house. It's yeah. still a good thing if you follow the steps, if you follow the process, because you hit on it earlier perfectly, instant gratification. Too many people want instant gratification overnight. Mm-hmm. That's not what happens in today's world in a long-term, scalable, growable business to actually level up and success in your life. It's consistent effort over a period of time, and it happens in little itty-bitty steps, right? And so we work on like a, just as an, an example, a 90-day time frame. We talk about it all the time. What we do today affects our business, our life, our fitness, our health, 90 days from today. So if you look back in the last 90 days of your life, you will know exactly why you are where you are today. Same thing with an open house. What have you done? What have you done for the 90 days leading up to that? Or what are you going to do in the 90 days in the future to help that client, these people that are meeting an open house? It's a long-term play. You always have to think Mm long-term. More advertising, more marketing, more opportunities to get face-to-face with people. Right. And so it's it's a huge win. Um, I liked, sorry to cut you off, but I liked one time you were, um, we were talking about open houses and, um, you know, you were talking about, you try to call people to get in front Mm. of them for hours, you know, at the office and then open houses, the best way to do that. You're getting in front of people. So yeah, what's the best way to spend your time is actually getting in front of clients. So a thousand percent. That's a great perspective. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, it's, Agents, especially if you're on a team, if you're if you have a if you have a, a, a good business, part of your daily actions is prospecting or follow up, mm-hmm. right? That's that's part of the success formula. And so what is your goal, Kristen, what is your goal every day when you come in and do your prospecting follow up? To reach people and talk to people and get to an appointment. Set an appointment so you can meet face to face. Yeah. Right? You spend countless hours attempting to get face to face with people, calling mm-hmm. names and phone numbers from the internet versus and your goal of doing that is to get face to face an open house is a way to skip a couple steps and get people face to face quicker exactly right and i mean let's we have a great answer rate on our team but i think the last time i saw a stat the national answer rate was like 15 to 18 percent of prospecting calls get answered in the real estate business maybe Mm -hmm. maybe it's even less than that um but the point is is like you call 100 people you talk to 15 how many of those people actually are you going to set an appointment with right Maybe none. Yeah, a couple probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if you're in our organization, it's going to be a couple because you've got the skill sets and we have rock stars here. But um, it's the point is, is that your goal is to get face to face. And the open house is a way to, it's a cheat code to skip a couple steps to get face to face with people. Definitely. Well, also the mindset of the people that are going to be coming to an open house versus just someone random you're calling on the phone. Mm-hmm. It's going to be much more receptive so of, great, you know, I've great thought about uh, changing how or upgrading uh, our home recently. And, you know, I just haven't really taken the plunge. And you're like, well, perfect. That's the kind of conversation you want to be having well, with those kind of people. Yeah. So that hits on the motivation of the people that you're calling and talking to, yep. right? Like the motivation is we want to meet with people that are motivated to buy or sell real estate. Like right. that's how, that's who we can help in the right now, right? We, it's never too early to meet with us. We say that all the time because we do want to build that relationship with them. But if you want higher intent clients, Get face to face with people that take time out of their day to come to meet a stranger at a house. Like yeah. that shows high intent. I don't believe what people say, I believe what they do. And when people come to an open house, they tell me a lot by their actions. They are highly motivated to buy or sell a home. Yeah. 100%. A lot of, a lot of people aren't going to drag their kids through random houses if they're not serious about buying, at least in the future. So. Yeah, that's a good I mean, point. Some people may say I came for the free pizza, but they still, you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. And maybe that's Love the, the thing. Love the cookies. But yeah. Well, hey, you'll still have the conversation of, hey, what have you been up to today? I went to an open house, got some free pizza. Oh, that's right. No yeah. There you go.
positive yeah. experience. <laughs> so um, to get your mindset right, the why behind the what, so to speak, the why of doing an open house is to get higher intent clients, get mm-hmm. face to face with them. And even if they're not a client, if they're a neighbor, that's a good thing. Like part of our process will break down is we go, we send mailers to the neighbors on purpose. We want the neighbors to come to the open house. I've had, that's another thing I've heard from agents. Well, only three neighbors came. What That's a great thing. Three neighbors came to your open house because they own a home next door or they probably have friends that they want to move ne- move next door to them. Yeah. Like exactly. that's a great resource yeah. for you, right? And it's sure. because we want that instant gratification or maybe our expectations aren't right. Again, let's, it's not the goal of the open house is to not sell, not to sell that house. That's not the goal. If that happens, great. But the goal is to get face to face, build relationships with people, whether that be a neighbor, a buyer, a seller, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Now you build a long term relationship, and you can actually build a business off of that. Mm-hmm. Definitely, because the neighbors might not be ready to sell now, but they might be in six months or a year, and then they're going to remember how good you treated them at that open house. So real life experience um, in our market, I was. I'm kind of a pioneer of several different things in our area. And one of the things years and years and years ago was open houses. And this is where a lot of this stuff comes from me actually learning through doing, right? And so one of the, I remember we were in an open house and we were the only ones doing them at the time. As soon as we started doing them, other people followed, right? Yeah. Which, whatever, it's cool. Um, but the the point is, is that I had people actually come to the open house that said, I've been trying to track you down. You're the open house guy. I have my house over here I want to sell. Mm-hmm literally walked in, pointed at me and said, you're the open house guy because nobody else was doing it in my market. Mm -hmm. And it got attention through the marketing, through the results, et cetera. Right. And so I got a listing out of that. And what is the snowball effect? Right. It's huge. And then we did an open house at that house. Like, like, so it's, Mm -hmm. there's a lot more, if you think long-term open houses are a huge, huge resource to your business, but you've got to do them right to maximize the opportunity. So now let's jump into how do we do a open house right? Kristen, we we talked about there's basically five steps. Mm -hmm. What are those five steps? First is planning. Um, You know, you're going to pick a good house um, to do an open house at. You want something that's in a neighborhood that you're trying to um, bring people to that's, you know, um, close to put Uh, directional signs out and everything like that. If it's in the country, it's going to be a little bit harder to get traffic out there. So it's going to need to be um, a house that you're trying to get people through the door in that neighborhood and that you can pull people from signs and stuff in that marketing. So So. the location, it needs to be a house that represents your brand, Mm -hmm. right? Like where do you want more clients at? Yeah. Go to that neighborhood. Yeah. Where is a neighborhood that has high visibility? Where What is a house that shows well, right? Mm-hmm. And so planning the right house, I think, is the first step. That's a pretty easy step, but it's yeah. very crucial. If you if you do the open house at the wrong location in the wrong area, you're not going to get the right results. And exactly. so planning the right house is very, very important. Um, and you, you hit on something there, too, is to make sure that you have a great area for signage, right? And so... Mm-hmm. Um, all or nothing, right? Mentality. Um, I've had that for for years. And so one of the things that I literally had on our checklist was a minimum of 25 pointer signs. At least. Like how many how many open houses have you seen that there's one pointer sign or none and then one sign in the in the in front of the house? Oh, right? all the time. Yeah. Like I want maximum exposure, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's there's just processes and and ways to lay out the signs are important. And we'll break we'll break that down in a little bit. Um, but let's go back to planning. What else what else do you need to do to plan? Um, Have a list of items that you need for the day of the open house, just so you know, you know, you don't have to go back through every time and check. Um, They're there. They're in a box maybe that you have in the office so that everything's ready to go for the agents and um, kind of grab and go and just make sure that you have everything that you need for that day. Yeah, just create a quick checklist, yeah. right? To, what do you need for every open house? All right, I got a checklist to make sure I didn't forget. Like exactly. I've forgotten an MLS sheet. Yeah. You have people walking in your open house and they say, hey, do you have something I can take from this? I don't even have any marketing material Yeah. because I didn't have a checklist. So we create a checklist. So if you don't have create- sign-in si- sheets, then how are they going to sign in? Exactly. You know, so. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Um, the next step is marketing. So I'm a marketing guru. I love it. I eat it, breathe it, sleep marketing. I love marketing. And so this marketing is a huge, huge opportunity for you to get more exposure through your open house, right? And so um, number one, your marketing starts way ahead of the open house. So part of your planning needs to be to get you time to get your marketing to do the work for you for the open house. Mm -hmm. I talked to a lot of agents are like, hey, I think I'm going to do an open house tomorrow. Okay, 
cool. If you want to do that, that's probably still a good use of your time. But what if you could do that next week and plan ahead and get your marketing on point? What if you could do a video about that's a sneak peek of the house, right? Mm -hmm. What if you had time to do fly or mailers to all of the all the surrounding neighborhoods to get nosy neighbors to tell them, hey, we're having an open house next door. Mm -hmm. Another cool trick that I that I think is very, very useful. If it's in a high caliber neighborhood or a very busy neighborhood, I say it's a neighborhood that you want to farm or that you want to dominate, right? You want to be the go to real estate agent for that neighborhood. Here's here's a an actual item that you should do in your marketing. You should hand print some flyers that are that are that you can take with you and go and door knock all of those and invite them to an exclusive open house before your open house, right? So, yeah. hey, we're doing this just for neighbors only. So, so say you're doing an open house from 12 to 2 on Saturday. Hey, from 11 to 12, we're doing this just for neighbors. Yeah, like I know a lot peak. of neighbors are scared to come in the house. They're like, oh, I don't want to waste anybody's time. We're doing this just for you, exclusive by invite only. Nobody else knows except for you guys. Mm -hmm. And invite them in, and that makes them feel special. You'll get more neighbors to show up because nosy neighbors are a good thing, right? Yeah. Um, so video works for marketing, video ahead of time, also video day of. Like as an example, Facebook Live is a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, Instagram Live, any of, the, any of those platforms that you use, like before the open house, like an hour before, just go live and do a quick sneak peek. Hey, we're at 123 Main Street doing this open house. Come and check it out. We've got free cookies, whatever. Be entertaining. Be authentic. Be you. Invite mm -hmm. people. Be a professional inviter to your open house. Definitely. Um, is there anything I, I missed on, on the marketing? Um, let me think. I, and mailers to neighbors and then door knocking, definitely. Um, we have uh, door hangers, too. Mm -hmm. If they're not there, that way you can leave it. Um, has like when the open house is going to be the address that way it kind of invites them that way too if we miss them if they're not home um, and then yeah, yeah I and that's... like I mean simple things right the details matter over a large scale so like the checklist for all the stuff you need to bring like create a marketing checklist mm -hmm. like an event on Facebook to invite people to oh, yeah. right um, you can do Facebook ads social media ads around your open house mm -hmm. you don't have to spend a lot of money but you can retarget people if you have a CRM with good data you can actually you can you can grab the data of people that are interested in properties similar to this and you can create a custom audience on social media and just continually remarket your open house your video to just those people you talk about high intent people people that are looking for a three-bedroom two-bath in this city I know that information from my CRM, mm -hmm. right? So why can't I create an audience and target them on social media for a week to invite them to the open house? Yeah. Like that's, there's so many different things and la layers that you can do to ma maximize your exposure in your open house. But too many people think it's just as simple as I just put a sign in the yard and nobody showed up. So it was a, it was a failure. Well, did you really master each of these steps? Did you master the marketing for it? And don't give up after one. Like I've only had one open house that I did from start to finish when I was in the field that nobody showed up to. And I did a ton. And it was not normal in our area. We're in mm -hmm. a smaller market. I only had one that nobody showed up to. It doesn't like, happen very often. No, it yeah. just, it doesn't happen. And the one that nobody showed up to, like I was looking out the window and people were driving by really slow. Like the, it still worked. They just didn't like the look of the house enough to jump in. Mm -hmm. So guess what I did next time? I grabbed a sign and I started to stood up by the road. I ran people down and said, hey, no, come on in. Like seriously, yeah. like what are you, is that your mindset as an agent? Or you just say, oh, they didn't think, they didn't care enough to come here. No, they cared enough to drive there. They just didn't pull in. So mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out why they didn't pull in. Oh, this house doesn't work for you? No problem, Kristen. We've got another one just down the road that may work perfect for you. Definitely. Let's go look at, I, this open house is open, over in an hour. Can you meet me there then? Why are people, but that's maximizing the opportunities, mm -hmm. right? So when people say open houses don't work, that's, that's an example of why they don't. Yeah. Um, also, contacting agents, other agents in the area, seeing if they have clients that it might work for and inviting them to the open house. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's text. a great idea, except for don't be that agent that does an agent-only open house. I think that that's Good a point. waste of time. That agent can see whenever the hell they want. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> call true. them and invite them to the that's public true. open house. Bring your client. Exactly, right? yeah. Instead of just doing agent only. But yes, I think that's a great idea. It helps mm -hmm. build relationships with other agents. Let's, yeah, it gets exposure for your seller. There's a lot of benefits to that as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's talk about step number three. Set up. Um, definitely making sure that the home is ready, that it presents well, smells good. Um, it's decluttered, depersonalized. 
Um, just make sure that it looks good. Um, grass is mowed, things like that, that some people don't think about all the time. And if it's an occupied home, if, if, if it's occupied or unoccupied, right? So if it's occupied, um, tell the seller to go take their kids to the park, right? Yes, they don't need to be in the home. Definitely. Um, and also get there early, help them prepare. Just like you were getting ready to take a listing, we have a home prep guide. Mm -hmm. Give a similar version to your sellers on your setup for open house because you don't want people coming in. It was a good house, but it smells like pets, so it's not for me. Exactly. Right, and so we just need to make sure we prepare them for that. Mow the grass, all that stuff. I think another important part is um, have, have something attractive to get people there other than just the house, right? Mm -hmm. So have food, have water, have a contest, do giveaways. Like I know there's different state laws and different things, but I've heard of people doing like gift card giveaways. Mm -hmm. Come in and part of you signing in is we put your name in the raffle to get $100 to Joe's Crab Shack or whatever, you know, pick a, pick a local business, whatever, partner with them. Mm -hmm. um, and it just helps get people in. It gets excitement. It's helps spread the word, right? And, and then they, they have an incentive other than, hey, this house may not be for me, but actually they have cookies and they have a, they have a bounce house for the kids. Yeah. Like whatever it may be to get people there, you want to make your open house an event. Makes it more fun for That's people. hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Um, another thing, like if you have a neighborhood yard sale going on or something like that, great time to have an open house yep. if you have a house in that neighborhood. We've, so. we've actually created a neighborhood yard sale for a new construction subdivision that we represented the builder on. We had mm -hmm. three houses for people to walk through and we mailed flyers and door knocked the entire neighborhood and said, hey, we are hosting a neighborhood yard sale on this day and this day. It was really our open house, but we knew we were gonna drive traffic. And so it was a good time for them to help us drive traffic and it was a win-win for everybody. Because now there were, I think there was 10 yard sales that happened and they were sharing it with their friends and they were getting people there. Well, guess what they see when they're doing the yard sales? They see our open house signs. Yep. And it's, it was a huge win-win. Um, uh, let's talk about setup for signage. It's so, so crucial. How you put up your signs is important. So make mm -hmm. sure you think through it. And again, don't just put up one sign at the corner. So how it's hard to explain this, um, in a podcast, maybe Kristen can help, but like, say you're going to an intersection. Don't. So I say put a minimum of five at in every intersection. That's my rule, depending on the intersection. Right. Yeah. Um, but when people say that they, they put five side by side, that's not how you do it. How do people drive? And I want them to see one sign, then another sign, then another sign, then another sign. Like I, they, if they are driving in this intersection, they can't miss our signs. Mm -hmm. Like they know there's something going on to the right and they're going to go check it out. Yeah. Because if you just put one, we, people are probably texting while they're driving. They're not going to see it, you know, yeah. but you just need to make it so in their face that they can't help but miss it. And again, don't put them laterally, right? Where they're just five side by side. It needs to be where they keep seeing them. Like if you could visualize your you're on a like a big curve on a road and they have the yellow pointer signs, yeah. that's how your pointer signs should be. They put MoDOT are, puts that, that way for a reason, right? Yeah. All this, the state puts them that way because people see them. Put your open house signs in the same way. Yeah. Um, also, make sure you have flags. When people are at the open house and they show up to the house, don't just have one sign that says, hey, you're here. No, you want it to be a party. Like imagine having one of those. We probably should get one. Like at car dealerships, those floating guys. That, Ooh, can we? Yeah, we, we should, should get one of those. That, hey, you're here. You made it, right? Because you yeah. want your open house to be an event. You want mm -hmm. them to feel like they're arrived. They're welcomed. Come on in, right? I know William did balloons, for yeah. example, on a lot of the signs around town just to make it to where people see it more. Yep. Which is because awesome. that movement mm -hmm. creates attention. 100%. Yep. Um, anything else on setup that I missed? Um, let me think. One thing um, for the pointer signs, I like to print off an aerial of the neighborhood mm, and yep. further out the day before whatever so you can plan. And then I mark where those are going to be. <laughs> it also helps so that you don't lose them later. Um, or if you have someone else picking up the signs, um, then they know where they're at too. So it's easier to find them. Yes. Um, Speaking Learning from experience. Yes, so. from experience. <laughs> I've drove in three days later to go show the house. I didn't open a house on the weekend before. And I'm like, yeah. oh, there's some signs there. I should probably pick those up. Yes. Because you don't plan out. And it allows you. So number one, you don't lose signs, right? Yeah. But number two, it helps you plan from an aerial perspective of where should I put these signs? Mm -hmm. Where's the most traffic going to be, et cetera. Yeah, right? where's the grocery so, stores that people are going to be at or yep. whatever is in that area. Put them so. by heavy traffic intersections. Mm -hmm. That's the goal, right? You want yeah. more people to see it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about step number four is the day of the open house. The biggest mistake I see people make is they, they smother people at open houses. Like they've seen a house before. Yes, you want to be a resource. You want to build a relationship with them, but don't smother them. 
Like Don't let follow them, them around. That's right. <laughs> like you, that's why they sign in, right? The seller allowed you to be there. Like it's the just make sure that they don't feel like you are smothering them to the open house. And what happens if somebody else walks in and you're the only agent there, yeah. right? You have to protect the front door as well. And mm -hmm. so find that balance. Um, can you give some tips on what's worked for you there? Um, it's all about building rapport with the people that come in, but also giving balance and giving them space. So I like to find out, you know, why they're there, what their why is, um, and just make it non-threatening. I'm not asking them 21 questions. Yep. I'm just getting to learn a little bit more on why they're there, what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. If they're working with an agent, just non-threatening, basic questions, getting to know them and their family, um, just to try to build that rapport with them. So Because the why is way more important than the what, right? And yep. Kristen understands that long-term relationships is how you went. Mm -hmm. So um, 100%. And so one of the things, too, that we do is everybody signs in. Yes. Like, make sure you have a sign-in sheet and everybody signs in. A great way to handle this is have this conversation with your seller and say, hey, we're going to have a sign-in sheet at your open house, and we're going to say, hey, the seller requests that you sign in um, to our open house. Sellers don't want strangers walking through their home. You understand you wouldn't either. Right. And so make sure that the seller does approve that, but I don't put that on me. Like I'm not trying to trap, like, again, I don't want them to feel trapped or smothered or like I'm attacking them. Right. But it's a safety protocol that the seller asked for. Right. Mm -hmm. And just get them to sign in and don't abuse that. Right. Don't take advantage of it. Don't spam their stuff, all that stuff. But what it does do is now you have their contact information, put them in your system on your long-term drips. Again, use it responsibly. Um, but then it gives you an opportunity to follow up. If things got busy or hectic and you didn't talk to them before they left, hey, what do you think of the house? Is there anything else I can do to help you? Um, and we'll talk about the follow-up here in a minute, but having that contact information is valuable for, again for the long term mm -hmm. right um another thing too is you said build rapport one i'm going to share a little trick and this is an old trick so you guys probably already know it but the ford analogy like that's a great way to build a quick relationship with people right and so make sure that you guys are building that relationship focus on the why on the people the motivation versus that it does the house work for them or not exactly. right and because if you build that relationship then you'll be able to help figure out figure out the what because they trust you. You build that trust with them. So FORD stands for family, occupation, recreation, and dream. If you talk about those, one of those four things resonates with everybody and you'll be able to have an intelligent conversation. They'll feel more personable and they'll feel more comfortable talking to you. Yep, exactly. All right, step number five. Clean up and follow up. <laughs> um, so obviously you're going to clean up the house and um, make sure that you get everything out, make sure it looks good for your clients. Um, really important is a follow-up. So um, we kind of divide the leads that come in and then you want to call them same day. Um, and just if you weren't able to have a good conversation, maybe there was too many people in there at once, um, kind of get to know what they're looking for, if they want to make an offer on the house or, um, if they want to meet back up with you and see other homes too, you try to set that appointment. Um, but just thank them for coming to the open house. Um, and if you don't get them on the phone, video text, thanking them for coming to the open house and um, be excited. Thank you for coming to the open house. Looking forward to working with you. Maybe mention something that they brought up at the open house about their family or something. Just make it personable. Yeah. Don't do like a mass text to everyone that came in. It has to be one-on-one, -on -one, right? Mm -hmm. um, so have, add that personal touch. She said something very crucial. I want to make sure you guys hear it. Follow up the same day. Like I've been in open houses where it's pouring down rain. I'm picking up signs. I'm like a drowned rat. It's six o'clock. I haven't eight in four hours. Like I, it's, it's not the best time for me to call them, but I know I need to call them that same day. And I still, I follow through on that. It's so crucial. Mm -hmm. So many, so many things can happen tonight that they don't remember t tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And so make sure that you call them that same day to have that relationship, to have that conversation and see how you can help them. Um, video texts are huge. Um, Kristen and I, um, somewhat disagree on on the call versus video text but the, her point is you can actually get more of a conversation through the phone call which i don't disagree with but i also think the video text is a, if you didn't build that relationship you know it's not the house for them depending on what conversation you had video texts are super useful mm -hmm. right because again it goes back to the communication circle how, what 55 percent of how people receive communication is visual is your body language right mm -hmm. and 38 percent your tonality 
Yep. Right. And only 7% is the words that you say. So if you just send them a text message, they only get 7% of the communication that's possible with a video text, they get hundred mm-hmm. percent. It gets all three. Right. And so, mm-hmm. and versus an email where people don't open it, everybody opens text messages. So it's just a great, great tool. And it doesn't need anything extraordinary, just a follow up. Mm-hmm. Hey, just, just want to thank you so much for coming to the house. I want to personally um, say it was a joy to meet you and your family and mention them by name and mention something personal and you're building that relationship and that will stand out because it's different. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, also make sure you put them in your CRM, right? Yes. Put them in, in your system, whatever system you use, put them on the appropriate drips, put them on the um, appropriate based on their timeline. Again, don't abuse the people that come in your open house and just spam them, right? Don't sell their information, none of that crap. But um, just you're, you're getting their information, number one, to protect the seller and the property, but also so you can provide value and help them. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, and when you put them in the CRM, it allows you to build that long-term relationship, right? So the again, we talked earlier is that 3%, only about 3% of people are going to buy the first house that they inquire about, right? And so that's there's 97% chance this isn't going to work out for them. right? And so what can you do to build that relationship to provide them with the information that they need, educate them so that they can make that decision? And so that's, that's kind of our job as real estate agents. And this allows you, you've already met them face to face because of the open house. Let's mm-hmm. tie this back to the beginning, right? So once you go through these steps, you met with them face to face. You would have spent an hour, two hours all day, not at the open house, calling strangers, trying to get face to face. You got face to face with people, maximize that in your follow up. Like don't minimize that. Well, they, this house wasn't for them. No, your attitude, your mindset matters. They I don't believe what people say. I believe what they do. Mm-hmm. They took time out of their day to come and meet a stranger at a house. Yep. That speaks that speaks a lot to me. And I make sure that I, I owe it to them to get to the bottom of that to help them. What if someone says they're just looking? What do you say to that? <laughs> I know I'll that's you, your favorite. I'll, I'll let you answer your own question. Okay. What, do, what do I say to that, Kristen? Well, um, just dig deeper. I always ask, you know, what are you looking for? Oh, great. When are you looking? You know, if they're just if they're just looking... Get to know what they're looking for. That's, I mean, it's not an objection. That's right. It's just dig deeper to find out what they're looking for. Maybe they're not looking today. Maybe they're looking three months from now, six months, a year. But just get to know why they're just looking and what they're looking for. That's like right. it's just a, it's a so, one off. So th- easy this, response. This is a great analogy. So I say this in prospecting, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of online leads will say they're just looking. Mm-hmm. That's our default as humans. That's our defense mechanism, yep. right? And a lot of agents confuse that as that is an objection. Mm -hmm. It is not an objection. They're on your website. They're in your store, your online store, looking at homes. What do we sell? Like That's not an objection. (laughs) They're looking for at our product that they're interested in buying or selling. They walk through the door at the open house. That's right. They even, probably want to buy. Better. Another at some step, point. that's where I was going with that, is the next step is you meet them face to face, they sign in, they're uncomfortable mm-hmm. because they've had a bad experience in the past. They don't like salespeople because they don't sell them the right way. They don't focus on the relationship, right? Yeah. There's something that's happened. There's there's skepticism for a reason. It's our responsibility to get through that. Just look just looking great. I'm glad you're here. Let's yeah. look around. Right. Instead of letting that stop you in your tracks, I'm glad. Obviously, you're looking. You're here. You know, like don't say that, but yeah, yeah and know you are. That's why you're here. And so, um, so just when they say just looking like at an open house, like my first go to would be like, oh, great. What what drew drew you to look at this home? Mm-hmm. Like, what caught your eye about this one? Yeah. Now I can have a conversation. Oh, how how soon are you go through the LP Mama? Whatever script it is you use, just do a different version of that and keep going through that. Like because a lot of people will say, well, I had people come to open house and they were just looking. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad thing. You know what I mean? That's why so, they were there. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Why did you host the open house? You wanted people that weren't looking? Like, I'm confused here. You know? So, yeah, 100%. That's a great point. Um, so, go back through the five steps, Kristen. The five steps to su- successful open house are? You may have to look at your cheat sheet. Planning. It's going to be the one first. Is, number one is planning. Marketing. Number two is marketing. Set up. Set up. Day of. Day of. What to do with the day of the open house. Mm-hmm. And finally? Clean up and follow up. Yeah, I don't know about the cleanup part, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, you gotta <laughs> hey, leave that, that. You gotta leave the seller's house in better condition than you you showed up to. Exactly. 100%. That includes That's your important. open house signs, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's let's talk about. I, I talked about it a few minutes ago at the beginning of the episode. Let's talk about something that we did, Kristen. You were a part of this that we did. We adjusted. Um, we pivot quickly here, right? And right. so we adjusted whenever. Um, COVID was, was a brand new thing and we had to close the offices. Everybody was forced to stay home. Like nobody knew 
what we didn't know, right? When right. COVID was a new thing. And so when that happened, um, businesses shut down, we weren't meeting people face to face, right? Like, um, let's yeah. talk about an adjustment that we made to still have the value of open houses, even though we couldn't be face to face with people. Yeah. So, um, you know, we couldn't have a lot of people come through people's houses with, with COVID and everything that was going on. And so, uh, we did virtual open houses, which I thought was awesome. Um, we had really great success with it, and we just um, had Matterport videos where we could virtually walk people through them um, and answer any questions that they had live, um, so talking to people yep. that way, which was awesome. Um, so so the, a few process, few tips is if you guys want to do that in today's market, I think it would still work, yeah. right? There's a lot of people that maybe – so how many people in your market buy homes sight unseen? or start their search before they get there. Mm -hmm. Like that's why we bought the Matterport tool. So Matterport's a 3D walkthrough service. There's other services out there, but you kind of need one to adapt with the times in today's day and age. And so what we did is we would host Zoom webinars. We would advertise, we did all the open house steps, mm -hmm. except for this, the in-person stuff. And we got people to our virtual open house yeah. and we walked them through the house like it was in real time through the 3D Matterport. And they could ask questions that we talked them through it like we were there with them yeah. to help them through the open house. And what was cool about doing that is the marketing was the same, right? Mm -hmm. Everything was the same. The only pivot was it was on it was virtual. Yeah. And so it worked so good. The first so this is in the middle of COVID. COVID's running like nobody knows what we don't know. People are scared to death to leave their homes, right? Like th it's at that point of mm -hmm. this pandemic. And we sold the first five houses that we did a, a virtual open house on, I believe it was in five days. Like, no, yeah. no, the whole world stopped. People were excited but, about it yeah. though, because it was different. You 100%. know, people weren't doing them. And so people were more likely to watch them because it was something new. Yep. And so, I don't know, I thought that that was really cool that we did. And I, I mean, I think that definitely could still work. Um, we do in person now just to get face to face, but if you're in that market, definitely try it out. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. Um, guys, this has been a great episode, Kristen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Colin, thank you as fun. always. Um, <laughs> guys, I hope I hope this was valuable. Um, there's a lot of stuff we covered. Uh, if you want a checklist from this, um, send, us, send us a message in whatever platform you're listening to this. Find us in our private group. We're happy to give you our checklist um, and share that with you. I believe in the abundance mindset, and we do all or nothing to change lives and help people. And so we're here to help. Um, if you have any other questions about Open House, we're here to help and, and reach out to us. So, um, guys, thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. If you found anything in this valuable, please share this with your friends. All or Nothing in Real Estate is a passion project of mine. This business has done so much for me and my family, and this is my way to give back. I'm also a real estate coach with Chet Black Select Coaching. So if you are interested in having a coaching consultation with me, please check out the link below. All or Nothing in Real Estate is not just a podcast. It is a movement. It is a community of contribution that is single-handedly designed to help change the real estate community in a positive way. So make sure you're following us on all social, social platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. Most importantly, make sure you've requested to join All or Nothing in Real Estate's private Facebook group. That is a private group that we keep in exclusive content and we do it in a private setting to make sure it remains a community of contribution. There's a lot of great in-depth content there for free. So please make sure you join that group as well. And again, thank you guys so much for listening. If you found this of value, please share this with your friends. It is my goal to give back and contribute to make this industry better for all of us. Thanks again.